participants. Maybe I can raise the second question. Okay, uh, very shortly. Okay, um, redefining workforce you mentioned, especially um, I mean engagement, redefining workforce engagement with extended reality. Um, workforce engagements is always a very crucial topic everywhere in every organization. How could extended reality, to be sure, helping and supporting workforce engagement? Hopefully, we can accomplish by almost 100% the engagement, but you have to also have some drawbacks, okay? Uh, could you explain to us? Please, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things is, especially now in a hybrid workforce, uh, workforce engagement itself, uh, so we talk about VR, right? Virtual reality. Let's talk about uh, in terms of augmented reality. So in use of XR would enable in an hybrid workplace, yep. it, will, it, will, it will close the divide of the physical uh, gap between employees it's, uh, in an environment. So I might have an employee who's in the office. Then I have someone who's, who's in, in my work uh, at home. But uh, I'll give you an scenario. As an engineer and a technician, a technician is in the office itself performing certain tasks. I have an engineer sitting at home. But in an ideal world, pre-COVID, the engineer would be beside the technician, working with the technician and guiding them through the process of operations, employee engagement itself. So in that sense, operation-wise. Now they can't. Extended reality would create a simulate that kind of an experience using technology. So the technician will still feel as though the engineer is standing beside me and working with me in that operation itself. So that's extended reality. That's how the, the workforce engagement happens. So this can also apply for just social interaction. So rather than having a Zoom discussion, so when, when you have that kind of a, a, a sense of uh, feeling, it, it gives rise to a lot of, of, of uh, uh, performances. Uh, because one of the things that has always has been the case is, I mean, whatever it is, humans are social beings. They, they and as HR always, you know, has to en ensure that. So this enables that. So whether it's in an operations settings, whether it's in a training setting, it allows that to happen, and that has shown. So that has shown in terms of where, where two employees are interacting over Zoom, the effectiveness is not as high as when they are using XR technology. And in terms of productivity, the output, uh, whether it's br even brainstorming, even when they're doing brainstorming, as you saw, right, in terms of using the whiteboards and so on itself, when they are in a virtual environment, the output, the productivity that's gained from that engagement is much higher than just having a Zoom discussion. So, so, that, yeah. so it, it, because it creates that kind of a, a, a feeling that they are together, uh, the bonding is there in place itself. Uh, a, a sense of uh, of comradeship is still there in terms of it. So th this is where XR helps to, it, it can't completely replicate a physical interaction, but it closes the gap very much itself. I mean, as I said, as technology goes, it might end up like, you know, you are physically there. Yeah. But right now, it is closing the gap more and more. Yeah, so does yeah. that help, Saka? Yes, yes, yes. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm still waiting for the uh, question from the participants. Um, now the third question from me as participant, as one of the participants. <laughs> okay. Uh, you mentioned in your presentation about the uh, extended reality in correlations with the workforce capabilities. Okay. Um, I mean, a company, at least for the time being, as, as far as I know, they have a lot of uh, workers, different workers, uh, younger generations, millennial generations, plus baby boomer like me, <laughs> and also uh, 
the uh, group of workers between millennial group and uh, baby boomer in between. Uh, those have different capabilities, I believe. Okay, and sometimes it's sometimes very difficult to coordinate, to synchronize those capabilities, especially if you are uh, developing something quite new in a company like Extended Reality, for an example. Okay, could you give us uh, a certain insights that what should be done by companies which really have such kind of very high diversity in terms of workforce. Yeah, so this comes back to the larger picture of digital transformation. It's not just XR. So uh, HR, one of the first things when you talk about digital transformation, you need to look at the readiness of your workforce. So uh, that includes mindset change. So if you talk about baby boomers, their mindset might not be changed. They might be more happy. They say, you know, I'm not going to use much technology and so on itself. Whereas if you're talking about the Gen Z, uh, they pretty much embrace digital technology. So first things first is you need to identify the readiness of the different demographics and you need to have that mindset change. And this is in large, not just XR, digital transformation, whether you're going to implement certain HR technologies or so, uh, and, and you need to make sure that you know the digital literacy literacy understanding is that the digital literacy capability is that for the different device the third piece is then how do you enable the digital engagement with the different workforce I'll, I'll give you one example again as i shared with you is when we looked at deploying this xr when when it was when we looked at deploying this some of the baby boomers in that sense uh, who have been working, they were not ready to use headsets. They were comfortable to use mobile phones. They were comfortable to use tablets. So what was done is for them, you create that XR experience on a tablet. Whereas we talk about a Gen Z who, who do gaming and all those things, they are very excited to use the headsets. So then, so you enable the XR experience application using the headsets itself. So you would need to have different ways of engagement for the different target audience itself. And so that, that would become a challenge in organizations. So it's not like, you know, uh, one, you just have a one solution and just cut it across organization. The, the, the baby boomers, or I mean, not necessarily baby boomers, I have come across, uh, there are many, who are uh, even millennials who are not ready for, for using this kind of a level of technology. So there is a transition phase in place. So it, first things first, mindset change. They need to know why, why they need to change, you know, uh, and then uh, building the digital lit literacy, the digital literacy on, of them understanding the technology and how to use the technology. Third is having a kind of a differentiated approach when it comes to engaging the workforce using the technology, depending on their level of readiness and gradually you increase that. So you don't go straight away to uh, going with XR, you start with VR, which is much easier for someone to consume or use it, whether it's learning or for operations or for collaboration itself. So, so you need to go through that spectrum itself. Um, Again, not just XR, I would always say HR's bigger challenge would be then when you talk about digital transformation and driving digital transformation, the workforce readiness is number one. You need, you need to make sure that you need to get the workforce ready because you can have the best technology, best solution, best infrastructure. But if the workforce is not ready, they're not going to use it. They're not going to engage in it. Yes, thank you very much. A very good answer. Um, while waiting a question from the participant, now I'm one of the participants with the fourth question for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, you mentioned in one of your slides about the engagement, I mean the extended reality engagement in correlations with skill building. Okay. I mean, uh, you mentioned, you already mentioned uh, how to engage, how to really approach 
uh, different kind of uh, groups, baby boomers, millennials, Z, etc. But one question is about skill building. It's really sometimes very difficult because you have to practice, you have to have time, you have to have a discussion, coaching and everything, something like that. Okay, It's about skills. Um, any particular uh, solution, any particular path, any particular, um, what you call, uh, guidance, okay, or maybe standard operating procedures uh, to come up with uh, an optimal solution for this engagement uh, for extended reality, especially in uh, correlation with skill building. Yeah. It's a good question. And again, this is, comes back to in terms of not all learning solutions and skill building has to be EXA. Uh, again, as L&D practitioners and HR practitioners, we know it, it has to be fit for purpose itself. So there is a space for use of EXA. Uh, I'll give you an example would be a lot of companies are using for onboarding, virtual reality. So again, because employees cannot come to the office as part of onboarding, so they use the, uh, they create a virtual environment. And so employees will go through the virtual environment and they get to see, they speak to an avatar of their manager. They get to see the operations and so on. It's uh, as part of uh, uh, induction. They learn about the, 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 the company. They learn about the, the, the way of working and all those things in a virtual setting itself. So that's been used. And in other skill buildings, like especially in in technical trainings, that's moving towards using digital uh, assets itself. Because this is where, as I shared with you, right, in, in, uh, uh, you are not able to support that in a physical environment. So you create that kind of a, a, a virtual environment in terms of it. Third, where it's moving is even coaching and mentoring. Coaching and mentoring, if you see that, we talk about digital humans, right? So some companies who are advanced are using uh, AI bots or even using AI human digital human assets to have that training on 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 mentoring and coaching itself. So if, even in sales negotiations, there's they've come across sales negotiation training where a, a new sales manager would would wear the headset and then sit down with a customer and have that interaction itself in a virtual environment. So, yes, yes. It, it, so, so in a skill building, uh, again, I would, I would still come back to saying that, you know, the technology that you use has to be fit for purpose itself. So yep. now this allows it, uh, and the other is classroom training. A lot of classroom trainings are, there's a, there's a space for classroom training. Now you can't. So mm -hmm. you now create that virtual classroom and you have the training in a virtual classroom environment itself. Yep. So you enable that. Uh, the last one is, is in terms of on-the-job training. So a lot of companies, for part of the on-the-job training, they are now using uh, augmented reality and virtual reality solutions to convert all their training into this. So the workflows and everything are being used as digital assets. Uh, what this allows is uh, just-in-time learning. And also, one thing I shared about was in terms of reducing learning loss. Why that is, is I can go in again and again. Because it's, it's there, right? It's an application. So as a learner, I've gone through and I want to refresh. I can yep. go into that module again and I can refresh and I can have that engagement again. Yes. So yep. that allows them uh, in terms of refreshers and so on itself. Okay. So, so, that, that, so again, it's, it's, if you ask me, it's, a, it's an evolution of online learning. Yep. Yep. Online learning yep. is, is still two-dimensional, so this is moving towards an immersive way of online learning. I see, I see. Is it? So, so the interactions and everything are slightly more yes. uh, advanced in that space. Yeah. Wow, yes, gorgeous. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bala. Uh,